this is so weird because I don't feel like I've done an introductory video for ages. So this is my first video back after Christmas. And I mean, you're probably thinking, hang on, she's had videos after Christmas. I've watched them because I'm sure you have watched them. <laughs> but what I mean to say is this is the first video back that I'm filming after Christmas because actually this is the 4th of January. I'm totally spinning you all out. Don't worry. If you think, what is she on about? Just skip this bit and wait to hear from my next special guest. I'm so excited to be travelling to California this evening to chat with singer and mezzo-soprano Leandra Ram. Take a listen. Wonderful. So my first question for you is, where does your passion for singing and performing come from? Oh, great question. I would say it came from my family. So when I was growing up, I heard classical music all the time. It was just like playing in our living room. Yeah. And it just subconsciously got into my spirit. And um, I loved just like hearing Mozart and Bach all the time because my mother's a pianist. So she would always have this music playing. And back then, you know, we didn't have screens that we were like using in our, for our, uh, in our free time. So yeah. what we would do is just like dance around and do these like improvisational dances to this background music. So that was like the first seed that was planted. And then after that, when I was a teenager and also preteen, I sang in a children's choir. And that also really like inspired me to sing. Um, at the same time, I played flute in like the school band. So I had all these like inspirational musical things in my life that um, really planted these seeds of, of music. Yeah, music was a huge part of your upbringing then. A huge part. And one other thing, now that I'm recalling all these things, when I was in the second grade, I also remember I was doing a school talent show. I was waiting in the wings. I was going to do this dance performance, this improvisational dance, yeah. similar to like what I did many years growing up. And the little girl in front of me went on stage and she sang The Greatest Love of All by Whitney Houston. And I was in the wings getting ready to dance. And I looked at her sing and I was just in awe. And I was just like, I want to do that. I want to yeah. do that. So, and I remember thinking that. I remember so clearly watching her from the wings thinking like, I wonder what it would be like to be a singer. Yeah. So that also was something that happened that like kind of narrowed my focus to music and singing. But you know what? How wonderful is it that you say that about just a normal little girl? You know, it's not always about watching these big stars on the telly and, and that being the seed, that being the influence. Sometimes it's kind of liking yourself to someone else and going, oh, I could do that. I could do that because yeah. if she's doing it, I can do that. That's exactly. wonderful. Exactly. Yeah, That's it was just a, a girl in my class and yeah. I just became inspired. It's true. So uh, kind of like moving on from that then, what training did you receive and how do you think that helped you then kind of progress? Yeah, so I was in a children's theater growing up that I love such great memories. Like I love the fact that you have a children's theater because I think that it's so great for kids. Yeah. I, I remember growing up, we did Oklahoma, we did Greece, um, how to eat like a child, <laughs> like all these like yeah. fun shows yeah. and it was it was so fun doing that and yeah I have really really great memories um so that was like another thing that I I think also really steered me in the direction of performing was you know going through that then after that I went to the Manhattan School of Music Preparatory Division which was a Saturday all-day music school basically yeah. um and basically after I did the children's choir that's when I decided to really focus on classical voice. So I represented my chorus in an international competition. They picked me as like the soloist. And I was like, me? Like, <laughs> there's so many other people here. But I was like, okay. So, and I hardly had any like formal, like classical training at that time. Yeah. But I went and I won first prize and I couldn't believe it. I was just like, oh my God, like, I didn't think I really, I was like, okay, I guess I'll continue this. 
So that's when I started to like really train and I went to the Manhattan School Music Prep Division and then from there I went to college there and that's sort of how my training progressed. Yeah and do you think that that was super important like for the grounding of where you are now and um, how do you think that people that don't have training do you know do you think that there's a a huge difference or um, you know what is your kind of personal experiences of that? Hmm. I think everyone has their own journey and their own path and there's some people that have never had any training but they're just so naturally talented and gifted that they'll just learn from you know life experiences so I think everyone has their own path I think the most important thing is having really good guidance and good role models to look up to I think if you have one great teacher that's all it takes or one great moment with a teacher that inspires you I mean that could make that could change your life so I don't think it's yeah I don't think it's about going to the best schools and the best this best that I think it's like if you have a teacher that you connect with and inspires you or if you have a moment even like at an audition or a performance that you learn from and changes you and motivates you that that could be a learning experience too I think that we learn all the time I'm still learning like people you know we're still learning even when we're working in the field now, yeah. you know. Yeah, for sure. And I love what you say there about like, it gives you that drive and determination. Sometimes, like you say, you know, you can be in a big classroom full of people and you've all got that same opportunity. But if you don't have that fire and that kind of drive to to, to go for it and, and, and really learn and like you say, lap up everything, it's it doesn't really matter that you're at the best place in the world, does it? Right, right. And I think it's all about connection with somebody that gives you that inspiration. And that could happen anywhere. That could be your kindergarten teacher. Or it could be like the the little girl in front of me that taught me that singing is awesome. You know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So talk us through your career so far and kind of your like standout moments, the things that you really hold on to that you find, you know, were brilliant for you. Hmm. So I perform in opera, classical, and musical theater, which is really, I'm honored that I get to do all genres because it's really fun to like kind of switch and go back and do experience all these different types of art. So I would say for musical theater, my favorite memory, one of my favorite memories recently was playing Judy Garland in The Boy From Oz. It was really awesome to learn about her life and to study her and just go into the psychology of what she went through. And um, when I performed that role, I honestly felt like I was transported to a different place every time I went on stage. Like I became so that character, like I forgot about my life, forgot about my problems. Like right before I went on stage, I really felt like that I transformed, which I I'm, loved that because that's what it's all about. It's about pretending to be somebody else. And when we can really do that 100%, that's when I think we do our jobs the best. I think when we, you know, aren't fully in the present moment, it's very challenging, obviously. Mm. So it was so cool for me to like, really get into that character. Um, So yeah, and then for opera, I would say, I recent okay so yeah I recently did Cinderella uh, La Cenerentola by Rossini and it was actually for children in a tour so we went to different elementary schools every day it was with the San Francisco Opera Guild so it's the education department of the opera and what I loved about it was that seeing the kids light up and they just like got so inspired some of them never heard opera before it was the first time they heard it And also what was different is that they were involved in the show. So they didn't just sit and watch, but like we would get to the school a few hours before and then selected students would come up and play the stepsisters or play, you know, some of the other supporting roles. So we got to perform with them. And so I think about like, who knows that could have changed their life. There could have been a student that saw one of those hundreds of performances that now decides, you know what, maybe I want to sing, maybe I want to look into music. 
So that was really cool for me, I think, just because I think it, it was, had such a large reach. There were so many kids that saw that, like yeah. different schools all the time. And I, I just think the possibilities of where that, you know, led and where that inspired them is, is endless. I love how wonderful both of those memories are so different. So the first one was the impact on you and how it made you feel and, and, and what you brought to it. And then the second one that you just mentioned was kind of how it made you feel, but how it impacted others. And I love that. You know, sometimes it's very easy to kind of get quite wrapped up and go, oh, God, this is brilliant for me. But right. sometimes it's so amazing how it impacts other people and then that force that comes back to you you know that reflection of you know just walking out and seeing the faces of those children or that audience members or or whatever it was you know that those moments sometimes have the bigger impact right just like so widely spread isn't it you know and then because of that the the feeling that you get is just wonderful Exactly. Yeah, I think it's all about connection and inspiring people. And if we're not doing that, if it's all about ourselves, then we might as all well just be on an island somewhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. It's all about like connecting and inspiring. So yeah, I agree with that. Totally. So do you have any roles or shows that you'd love to be in? And has that changed over the years? Because I know, like, you know, growing up, I was the same. Oh, I really want to do this. I'd love to play this. Oh, I love this show. But as you get older and your experiences change and your life experiences change too, you know, are there any are there any parts that you now would love to play? Hmm. Well, I was first going to say the cruise ship that I did was pretty cool because I got to do a little bit of everything. Um, so I was a lead vocalist on Celebrity Cruises, and so we got to do a Cirque show. We did a pop show. We did a Broadway show. So that was really cool because that was kind of like everything. Yeah. Um, and I loved that memory. Um, but, yeah, like you said, moving forward, it's like thinking about – where do you want to go? Where is your life? Where is your art calling you? And I think now like really getting into like character work and roles that I can fully embody um, more serious, maybe more motherly roles. Since I am a mother, I'm extremely like connected to that energy of like, you know, yeah. nurturing and protecting. Um, I have three young kids. So um, I would say maybe more, you know, mother roles or um, roles that have like a deep emotional uh, motivation, you know, could like kind of coinciding with me getting older, I guess. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. So if you were to do a um, concert, somebody said to you, right, I want you to do a one woman concert. Um, what would be your top five songs that you just have to sing? Mm, okay, I would say um, The Greatest Love of All. Yep. Um, I would do a mix of everything. I would probably throw in an opera aria. I would probably do Una Voce Poco Fa from The Barber of Seville. Yeah. I would do, um, let me think for a second, um, <laughs> Defying Gravity from Wicked. Yeah. Um, I would do an older musical, like I Could Have Danced All Night from My Fair Lady. Yeah. And then maybe I would do, um... A fun dance song, like um, I want to dance with somebody. I happen to throw two Whitney Houston songs in there. I don't know why, but yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, so kind of a mix of everything, something for, something for everybody. Yeah, I would say Amazing. so. And how do you feel like that's pretty cool? You said there that you kind of you cross three genres particularly like quite well. Like how does that, how is that for you? Because I I know I grew up just purely musical theater and I hit kind of my late teens and I found classical singing. Oh, and my okay. teacher, my teacher, um, you know, kind of really worked on the structure and, and the sound and, um, you know, like all these brilliant um brilliant composers and, and arias that we, we ended up singing um, and then that for me then changed a lot of the types of things that I sang for that part of you know part of my right. life and um, I find that really hard now going back into musical theatre for the past couple of years to pick up the classical again you know how right. do you find that how do you 
how do you keep your hands in in all of those pies then if if you will do you have to keep singing the songs over and over again to kind of keep it there how do you how do you do that yeah that's a great question i think it's all about muscle memory so for sure i have to practice like if I go for, I don't know, a couple of weeks without singing classical, I'll totally notice the difference. When I go back to it, I'll be like, oh, that's not quite right. I have to like take some time to get everything in alignment again, because it is such a different way of singing, you yeah. know, musical theater, especially contemporary musical theater, so different than opera. It's like night and day or classical yeah. singing. So yeah, I definitely have to like keep my voice in shape. And I'll notice the same thing for musical theater too. Like if I'm singing classical and I have not touched musical theater for a few weeks, same thing. When I come back, I'm like, oh, I can't hit those notes quite as well. So it's definitely yeah. like being an athlete in two different sports, I think of it, and you have to keep up each. And so I also notice that one can bleed into the other. So what I like to do is if I'm doing a musical, let's say, that has like a lot of belting, a lot of high notes, and I have to use like a super high mix, I'm not going to sing classical for that whole period. Because if yeah. I do, it's going to be harder for me to get those notes out. And same thing vice versa. If I'm doing a classical concert and I am belting every day, I'm going to notice the difference and I'll start adding like straight tone into my classical singing, which I shouldn't do. So yeah, it's definitely like knowing it's like a balancing act of like yeah. when to practice what and preparing yeah. for each gig as if that was like a, um, like a competition, if you will, if you were like a tennis player, like preparing yeah. for that particular event. Yeah. yeah. It's hard, isn't it? And I kind of feel like there are so many, you know, plus sides to it too because you know when I was singing all like my musical theater stuff I had a really good belt but like my head voice was non-existent you know I just didn't when you know you'd go for like a prep audition and they'd be go running the scales up and you'd be thinking I've got nothing now you know I'd, I'd be like a solid and then it'd be like I'd fall off fall off a cliff like there would be nothing you know right right um, whereas obviously when when I started with my classical teacher you know I didn't even know at that point that that's the journey we were going to go to I just wanted some really like hardcore lessons and I was told this was the person to go to so mm. I remember singing like I'm pretty sure I sang um hallelujah and and it's very right. you know but I instead of going um into any kind of mix or head voice it was all belt pretty much and I remember she kind of like looked at me and was like mm, there's a definite like I reckon and I was always an alto I always sang the alto lines for everything she was like you've there's definitely a good soprano in you and I remember laughing I was like no nah. I, I genuinely can't sing that stuff I was like no -uh. I was 15 mm. 16 I was like no I can't I can't I just can't do it and um yeah the training then like was like I say it was it was quite intense but that you know 10 years on I'd still kind of notice then when I go and sing things I was like oh my goodness I've got notes there that I never would have had if I if I hadn't if I hadn't have sung with this person you know if I hadn't have had right. this kind of classical training and I think that's what I say to the children that I teach you know really try and push yourself in in those areas that at the time you might go I don't want to do that or I can't right. do that because, you know, over time, those notes that were practically impossible become that little bit easier. And then over kind of a year, those are the easy notes, man. You can hit some really, really big notes. And I right. think that's that's a wonderful thing to, to note, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. I think nowadays, especially like the worlds are merging more, yeah. like the classical and musical theater. And I don't think it's really like taboo anymore to like do both I think yeah. like a lot of people do it now and I yeah. think it's actually wonderful that they're becoming more you know acceptable by each other <laughs> absolutely yeah definitely definitely so is there someone um in the world that you'd love to meet kind of either in the world of um theater and the creative arts or just in general someone that you think oh my goodness if I could have an hour of your time who would you love to chat to Mariah Carey, I would say, yeah. because she has the most incredible voice and yeah. her mother was an opera is, I'm not sure if she's still alive, an opera singer. Yeah. And she sort of had that early, I think, you know, inspiration, at least, if not training. And her whistle tones are incredible, like her yeah. super, duper high, like crazy octave notes. I would love to just have an hour to ask her, like, 
how, what's your secret? Like, how do you have like a super crazy range yeah. and have a career that lasted decades yeah. and, you know, healthy voice, but incredible. And like, I would love to just like pick her brain a little bit on technique yeah. um, because I think it's amazing what she can do with her voice. It's just astonishing to me yeah and I think what's wonderful as well I mean everybody knows her for that that Christmas anthem you know that's the one right. people know her for right but then you you actually listen to the tracks that's, that are very uh, a lot less kind of popular and, and people aren't as familiar with and you think oh my goodness you know the 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 low register that she's got is so like pure but then she goes up and just like you say keeps going into areas and territories that you think aren't even possible exactly <laughs> what you know it's it's insane and you th kind of think wow you know there's a very talented person and like you say oh, it's incredible to to be like right I need to know how you're doing this <laughs> yeah especially those super super high whistle tones I don't know anybody that can sing those crazy non-human notes <laughs> <laughs> it's literally like I don't even know like animals can only hear you right now you know it's, right. it's, it's that high I know but it's so effortless you know you watch like even yeah. things on on YouTube where you've got like um rehearsal recordings and stuff and and you know those kinds of you're not giving your best you know you, you it's a rehearsal you're just trying things out and you see somebody just very relaxed and she's doing all this and you think what you're doing yeah. that without even like practically trying <laughs> right it's crazy totally. So do you have a favorite season within the year? Is there a kind of part of the, the year that you love? Uh, maybe there's a lot of celebrations or just like in general, the weather. Oh, I like summer, I would say. Yeah. I love the long days and just like tanning and being out in the sun and going to the beach. I have such great memories of going to the beach with my grandmother. And um, no, I love the sun so much. So like I moved from New York to California and actually just this weekend I was looking at some, I was like organizing cause I had nothing else to do. I was like, <laughs> reorganize this closet. And I found some pictures of me back when I was in New York and I was like, oh my God, I had no sun <laughs> back then. I was like, so pasty. And like, since I've been in California, I love the sun. I'm like, how could I have not lived with this? Like it's so beautiful in the summer, like really warm and yeah. Um, yeah, I love the sun. I was also born in the summer, so maybe that's why I like I'm drawn yeah. to it. But yeah, I love um, just that warmth and uh, that feeling of, you know, these, these days are never going to end. It's going to be yeah. light all night. I love that. Yeah, beautiful days. I mean, we our summers have got a little bit better here in, in Wales. I mean, we don't have particularly a lot of sun and, and warmth, but we have some yeah. lovely beaches. So when because we're on the coast, so when when it when it is lovely, we, we head to the beach and, and it's beautiful. But um, yeah, that sounds lovely. Sounds wonderful. Yeah. So what about a dream vacation? Do you have one? Is there mm -hmm. is there like a, a top two or three places that you would just love to visit? Okay, so when I was working on the cruise ship, I was thinking to myself, how amazing would it be to be a guest on this cruise instead of like working on the cruise or I'm thinking yeah. about like performing and got to get my makeup ready. I would love to go on a cruise when this whole thing is over yeah. <laughs> and just like island hop and not have to worry about like a show to do, but just like enjoying the ship and enjoying the different Caribbean islands. I love the Caribbean um yeah I also would think maybe Hawaii I'd love to go um I've been to Hawaii before I've been to the big island um but yeah just like a place that's romantic and yeah. calming and you know beautiful yeah. some of oh and also I went on the cruise to uh, Mykonos and Santorini in Greece oh, yeah. and I loved those places oh my god heaven on earth literally yeah yeah and sometimes like the more like undiscovered places you know it's just so yeah. quiet and and like serene but just everything's beautiful and you know feels very kind of like homey 
I love yeah. those places. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. So talk us through then, like quarantine. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but we here, you know, we've been in some sort of lockdown quarantine since kind of end of last March. So it's kind of been like nine, ten months of pretty much, bar the odd couple of weeks of, you know, pretty much been at home. Everything's online, um, n- not being able to see people. What has your quarantine been like? And tell me, what have you been up to? Yeah, so same thing, it started, so March 13th was the official like announcement that we have this pandemic, yeah. and shortly after that was the lockdown, and we've been in lockdown pretty much ever since. I mean, there's been like, it's been lifted a little, but then back, but pretty much we've been uh, at home. So yeah. I kind of quickly discovered I need to delve into this virtual world yeah. because I missed singing and I missed performing so much. And I was like, I'm not going to be happy just like waiting for this to end. I want to continue. So I started like looking out for virtual opportunities. Um, So I'm really happy with like what I've done. It makes me smile just thinking about like the people I've met that I never would have met before 2020. Um, First thing that comes to mind is something I did with an English company actually. It's called Vapra, Virtual Opera, and it was with the London Philharmonic, and we did um, L'Enfant et le Sortilège, The Child and the Magic Spells, and they actually had a child play the child, which it's actually, that doesn't normally happen in the live production, but because it was all virtual and they had the ability to do like computer stuff, they had the voice of an adult and then they had a young child, and it was really, really cool, Um, and then I did a play which was really fun for me i did um a play about relationships it was called second place women who come in first and it was awesome it was about a wife and a husband and there he had an affair and then she ends up triumphing in the end and it was it was great yeah Um, and then i did so many like virtual choir stuff um lots like countless (laughs) virtual (laughs) choirs um and then I did um, some recordings. I did a new song um, that was written for me by a composer. And it was uh, with the Gabriella Lena Frank Creative Academy of Music. So they randomly paired me and a composer. And it was the most beautiful piece. And I got to premiere it and self-accompany on the piano. So I actually improved my piano skills when I first saw the music, I was like, there's no way. And I was like, you should get somebody else to play the piano. Yeah. But then I was like, you know what? I have the time. Why don't I practice it? And I practiced it. And it was pretty awesome to like have that progression and that self-improvement that I was able to actually learn the whole piece. And then we ended up collaborating on a second piece. So it's pretty much been like project after project. Yeah. Um, And I was reflecting on this and I just can't believe that pretty much, I would say 75 to 85% of the people I worked with this in 2020, I didn't know before. Like I met them virtually this year, which is pretty cool. So I would say that the pandemic has actually the silver lining for me is that I've been able to collaborate with so many more people because location didn't really matter. So it didn't matter if I was in California or if they were wherever. Yeah. Um, so I could, I worked with like my much bigger reach this year, yeah, which was pretty I, cool. I think I totally understand. I mean, I feel very similarly that, you know, it, a lot of the time it's very easy to look at the negatives and I'm sure, you know, that there are so many and, yeah. and it is, it can get a little bit on top of you sometimes and you kind of, when you can't see, you know, the road ahead and you can't see what the next thing is, you know, that, that it's, it can be a little bit daunting and suffocating and it's, you know, you don't know what to do. But like you say, when you take these little opportunities that you think, oh, you know, who knows what this is going to be, this could, you know, what ha- and and sometimes you take that little risk and it leads on to so many wonderful things and and like you say the whole zoom skype internet thing has been an absolute godsend you know a yeah. blessing a blessing like no other at this time because now like you say you've got these wonderful opportunities you've had these fantastic experiences and meeting people that you've you know met people that you've never met before and that oh, you potentially could like it could snow 
snowball into so many different things friendships you know um like working relationships like Mm -hmm. partnerships you just don't know what could happen you know in the future like you say this is the you're writing a second song with somebody that you didn't know before right start of the year I mean that's insane and that's amazing to hear that you've done so many incredible things thank you yeah I forgot now I actually think about it I did a second English production which totally wouldn't have been possible before um it was a halloween show oh. and it was a musical theater rock musical that was based in england and it was oh. adrenaline shots comics was the name of like the company yeah and yeah i the the woman who played the lead role i'm friends with her now and i i never met her but i feel like i know her even though it's just been virtual like i feel like I totally know her and it was really beautiful like after the whole show was over she texted me and she said I consider you a really good friend now yeah and it's just like amazing to me that it's like wow I've never met you in person but we developed this like beautiful relationship as friends and and one other thing I wanted to just say is that um I also did a recording which amazing a Christmas opera for children and Yeah, it's called Lucinda y las Flores de la Noche Buena, and it's a bilingual um, children's opera, um, and it's about strength and courage and confidence, and um, that was really cool to have that released, because I think that that gave children a lot of hope during the holidays, because they could just put on the album, even though they couldn't come see us perform. We normally perform it live. It's with the San Francisco Opera Guild, and we normally do it every Christmas. Um, So I think the fact that we released it in 2020 was great because, uh, and it's on Amazon. You can get it on iTunes, um, Spotify. Um, So even if they didn't buy the actual CD, they can still like play it and have the holiday, you know, music going on. So that was another really cool thing. It's wonderful. And like you say, you know, Christmas is so magical for so many people. But let's be honest, it's it's the children that that really fuel that that magic of Christmas. And, and you know, they're the ones that really embody it, don't they? And when you like you, you say you perform that every Christmas and, and lots of people would have would have gone. It would have been a tradition. It would have been something that people yeah. would have would have enjoyed thoroughly. And when you then don't have that, what you did there, you know, that's so wonderful to then have that available to them to either experience mm-hmm. for the first time which which is amazing um but also for those that are, are so used to going and, and enjoying that they could still enjoy that at the holiday time that's amazing oh thank you yeah it felt like a, a great project to be involved with yeah. like the timing was perfect yeah so um before we move on to my last question uh, are you up for a quick fire question round so i'm just going to ask you a couple of questions and it's like first things that come to your mind sure okay we'll see amazing. how I do. Okay. Uh, you've kind of already answered the first one, but hot or cold? Hot. <laughs> Inside or outside? Outside. Disney or Marvel? Disney. Spots or stripes? Stripes. Sea or sand? Sea. Cat or dog? Dog. City break or country escape? Country escape. Christmas or birthday? Christmas. Handbag or backpack? Handbag. Adventure or relaxation? Relaxation. Chocolate or sweets? Chocolates, for sure. Yay! (laughs) Dark chocolate. (laughs) Absolutely, it's got to be chocolate. That was good. Sometimes, like, it gets a bit stressful. You're like, okay, uh, uh. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) And also sometimes you you say something and then afterwards you're like, why did I say that? <laughs> right. I think it also depends on the mood I'm in. But I guess, you know, I'm in an outdoor mood. So everything was like outdoor, outdoor. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Well, it's been amazing chatting with you. And my very, very last question is going to be your plans and hopes for the future. So, you know, what do you have, if anything, coming up? You know, tell us about anything you've got um, in the pipeline um, between now and kind of 
the end of the year or anything that you'd hope for you know you'd love to get your teeth into any projects that are coming up that you think that's for me or something that you'd just like to create for yourself what is 2021 going to be like for you do you hope Mm, great question um i would say 2021 for me is about staying focused and You know, I think that it's natural that, you know, for 2020, it was really hard for a lot of people to stay focused because the world is like crumbling around you, right? Yeah. (laughs) Like, how do you like stay focused and on task? So I um, meditate a lot and that is so wonderful for me. I love that practice. And I know everyone has their own, you know, thing that they do to connect themselves to spirituality. Um, But I love just, you know, focusing on like, how can I contribute to the world today? What can I do that will make a little bit of a difference? You know, for sure. Yeah. So the thing that I've been doing a lot also during quarantine has been teaching more private lessons. And that's been so fulfilling to um, work with kids all over the world on Zoom. So I'm going to continue that. Um, And I do that with a company called Toonlark. I'm a senior instructor. And I offer private voice and private piano lessons. Um, And it's all on Zoom. And that's been amazing. So I'm going to definitely continue that. Um, And I'm working on a full album, actually. Wow. Yeah. So I've also um, reached out to a lot of composers about new pieces and premiering them. And I'm so humbled at the response. It's kind of like similar to what you said about how you reached out and like so many people just like jumped on board. Yeah. Same thing with me. Like I reached out to composers just like with a hope and a prayer that they would even respond. And not only did they respond, but with enthusiasm and with premieres, like I can actually premiere their pieces, which I'm just like so like amazed at. So I'm working with a record label right now on a full album that's going to come out and it's all contemporary classical um, art songs, like song cycles that are premieres. That's wonderful. Oh so my that's goodness. Like my, wow. Thank you. I'm super excited. That's like my big, big thing of 2021 is yeah. this album. So yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. That's incredible. Like you say, isn't it just so wonderful that even during this time, you know, it's just super, super important that we kind of hold each other's hands here. You know, people that you don't know, people that, you know, are very similarly in the same field as you or just, you know, totally worlds apart. And it's so important that we, that we hold each other's hand and go, this is okay. Like we don't know what we're doing either. We right. either feel very similar to you or, or maybe we don't, but we can connect here we can kind of we can help each other out here and um something something wonderful is going to come out of this you know i i am almost positive that well you know we're all like kind of progress like living embodiment that that it will you know so many things have happened during this time that have been so positive that um hopefully we can just really kind of continue that and 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 it's just yeah so important that as as particularly as creative arts go you know it's been it's been tough things have been yeah. really really tough you know there have been no theaters open there's been no shows going on you know everything has just you, we feel like we've been squashed yes and, um you know it's like we won't be forgotten we will be remembered and like you know we we have to kind of help each other through this and what what a wonderful way like you say to reach out to all those people and they've come back to you and said yes have some new material for you to be uh, yeah. just incredible i've also noticed that in general people have had more compassion towards one another there's been more sympathy there's been just a general like energy at least here in my town of just like people really caring about one another you know knowing that life is so fragile and that like we're all possible victims of this virus and I I really loved the um, sense of community like even though we're all quarantined it's just like this general feeling of like I care about you you care about me like yeah it's it's just really great that I, I, I think the world is going through like you know, a transformation that when we're out of this, even though it may take a while, we will be better on the other side. And there is another side. It's just getting there. (laughs) Like, like you say, you know, just, just somebody reaching out that you've never even heard from, you don't even know who they are. And they reach out to you and say, look, you know, let's do this. Let's, let's, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's, you know, or just, 
hi how are you you know you don't know me but I just want to I just want to reach out and see how you are like that just makes somebody feel incredible right yeah definitely amazing well thank you on that note thank you so much for agreeing to chat with me today I've had such a wonderful time lovely to talk to you and meet you and hear all about what you've been up to and I would love to keep in touch over this time and um, please let us know when when your album comes out and all the things that you're go that are going on and anything that, that we can do to kind of support one another anything if you want to come and teach at the company virtually and that, oh. would, be am that would be amazing we'd love to have you Oh, that'd be great. It's been so great talking with you. And I'm so inspired that you have talked to so many artists all around the world and that you're reaching out. And it's just so great to to have this connection. Yeah. And um, I thank you so much. I've had a lot of fun. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Will you take care of yourself? Have a lovely, wonderful day. And um, I'll contact you when this kind of goes up on the channel. And um, yeah, we'll keep in touch for sure. Great. And I'll send you the links um, for those please two things. Do. Um, yes, yeah. yes, please do. That would be wonderful. We'll put that all in there. Take Thanks. care of yourself. I'll speak to you soon. Have a lovely day. Bye. You too. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much, Leandra. I had a fantastic time chatting with you and all the very best for 2021. Oh, I'm sure we've all said that. All the best for 2021. Come on, 2021. <laughs> I think there's just so much hope and longing for normality this year that everybody is pinning their hopes on 2021. I just really hope that you're all well and that you're all safe and hopefully these videos are making you smile and just taking a little bit of time out of your day to just try not to focus on what's going on at the moment because I know sometimes it can just really get just a little bit too much. Take care everyone and join me next time for another special guest.